Welcome, everyone. My name is uh, Cosmin Koshokar. I'm a software engineer at Adobe and uh, a maintainer of security profiles operator. This is the subject of uh, our talk today, improving container isolation in Kubernetes. Um, before we start, I'm just curious, how many of you do use uh, Kubernetes? Please raise your hands. Yeah, almost everyone. Uh, how many of you do you follow good security practices, especially with respect with container security when you deploy your workloads? Um, <laughs> and now <laughs> the tough questions, how many of you do you deploy uh, custom profiles, security profiles such as SecComp or AppArm or SE Linux with your workloads? So, so very few people. So I hope at the end of this talk to convince you that deploying custom profiles is uh, not such a complicated task. Um, so this is the agenda for today. We will first start uh, looking at some motivators for container isolation. And also we'll, we will look at security configuration in Kubernetes, especially with uh, respect to security profiles then we will introduce a security profiles operator and we will have a deep dive into its features and we'll follow with some demos along. At the end, we will conclude with some challenges we face when we try first time to adopt security profile operators, operators at Adobe and we will go over some contribution we made in order to make it the operator to run at scale. So, what are some of the motivation for container isolation? Maybe all of us, we know that uh, containers, they share uh, the same kernel when they run. So in order to achieve a good container isolation, we need multiple layers of security. I hope uh, every one of you follows basic or security, container security practices, such as not running container as root or don't use excessive Linux capabilities. So we will not go in these details in this talk. We will uh, look at security profiles, which is essentially an additional layer of security. So also when we want to achieve a better isolation, we want to reduce the number of features which are exposing through a container. So it doesn't make sense to have API calls in containers which they don't do file access, for instance. Also in some situation or use cases, we have uh, requirements to run customer code and this requires additional sandboxing or hardening of the, of the, of the container. So we need to, to go a bit an extra mile. Uh, and maybe all of you heard of quite a few kernel bugs over the years, which they, they got exploit, exploited to achieve uh, escalated privileges and escape containers. And maybe not lately, multi-tenancy, it's probably a reality of any Kubernetes cluster, medium or large in, uh, in, in uh, today's organizations. So uh, what are security profiles? Maybe you know, I will just have a short uh, recap here. Uh, yeah, maybe you know about SECOM. This is the most basic. It's, uh, it allows a set of system calls uh, and it, it's a security mechanism which can restrict the number of system calls which can be performed by, by a container. Also, we have AppArmor or SE Linux. These are uh, Linux kernel security modules. They allow much more fine grain uh, control over the capabilities which can be used by, by a container. Now, uh, what's the current state of, of these uh, technologies in Kubernetes or in Kubernetes, let's say, security configuration? Unfortunately, Kubernetes doesn't provide very strong security defaults. And especially for SEPCOM, uh, we need to explicitly enable SEPCOM in the kubelet uh, uh, 
arguments. And this is actually a, a runtime default seccom, which gets shipped with the, the runtime. This is a fairly large uh, default uh, profile, which includes probably over 400 system calls, which is crafted for generic workloads, and it runs uh, most likely any workload. I would say in most situations, we don't need that many syscalls, so it's relatively easy to reduce this number of syscalls, to reduce it to hundreds of them. Also, in the security context, we, we have uh, SE Linux, but unfortunately not yet up armor, it's not yet graduated. Um, and also, a challenge is that today we don't have any more only Docker, or Docker was deprecated. We have a number of, of runtimes uh, in, in the cluster, and each runtime has a slightly different default profile. So some of them, they have additional system calls. So we want to have a consistent experience. So what, what's the state of SECOM, how we can configure SECOM in Kubernetes. So SECOM can be configured in the security context, as I said before. Either we use the runtime default, or we can create a, a custom profile. So a custom profile needs to be deployed on each cluster node. And as we see here, when we set up the security context of a container or a pod, we need to reference this profile. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a challenge, especially in large Kubernetes clusters to, to have this deployed. Yeah, Armor on the other side uh, is not yet in security context. It's uh, basically annotation driven. You just need to apply an annotation to the pod in order to, to define a custom app partner profile. Uh, yeah, it's, it's more or less the same, like a uh, second it needs to be, be available on the underlying node. So some of the challenges, as I said before, the default profiles are too permissive for most of the workloads. They have over 400 system calls, and we can see that even workloads like uh, Nginx, they can run with probably l uh, less than 200 system calls. Uh, another challenge is that if you already created custom profiles, you, you know that it's really tedious to do it manually and it's, it's quite a challenge. So, especially when you think on a cluster where you have hundreds of containers and you, you want to, to automate this to, to some extent. Also, distributing profile in a cluster is, it's, it's not easy unless you control the entire Kubernetes distribution. There is no really standard mechanism. Most of the managed uh, Kubernetes distribution, they don't have a way to, to install custom profiles. And also another aspect is uh, cluster auto-scaling. So when we create automatically new nodes in order to scale our cluster, we need to make sure that these profiles are already installed on the nodes. So how can we achieve this? Yeah, now if we look at, at the life cycle of a, of a security profile, we see that first, first of all, we need to create or record the profile. Then we need to distribute it or install it into, into cluster nodes. And only afterwards, we can use it in our workload. And also, let's not forget, this profile needs to be kept up to date. So. We all use now continuous delivery, continuous, in, continuous integration, continuous delivery. A service evolves, introduces new functionality, which probably requires new system calls or is removing uh, functionality, which can lead to, to uh, less system calls. So this is also a challenge. So now, uh, in order to automate this, uh, Kubernetes 6 created a, a, a project called Security Profiles Operator, which main goal for, for this operator is to automate act, essentially the life cycle of a, of a security profile. 
So it runs inside of the cluster as an operator. It, it also provides, uh, more recently, we have a CLI tool, which can be used outside of the Kubernetes use cases. For instance, if you want to record the profile in a CICD system uh, and then distribute it, we will see in a minute uh, a demo. So some of the features of the, or like the main features of security profile operator is profile recording. So it automates all the uh, profile recording uh, uh, functionality. We have essentially two implementation for profile recording. One is eBPF instrumentation. Uh, essentially we in insert the eBPF bytecode when a, when a profile is recorded, we trace all system calls and then we save them into, into a profile. Another way to, to record these system calls is to use audit logging. Maybe you know where if you use SECOM that you can switch SECOM in audit logging and every time when a, a, a syscall is executed by, by the container, it gets locked into audit logging so we can parse this and cre create a, a profile. This is probably less, less precise like eBPF. Also, profile recording can be simply started and created by just uh, a, a custom resource. We will see in a, in a demo. Or, as I said before, we have a CLI, so there is a command where you can record of the cluster a, a profile. Then the second main functionality is profile distribution. So these profiles need to be installed into the cluster and also they need to be kept in sync every time we modify the content of this profile. It needs to be, re be reinstalled or we will remove a profile, it needs to be cleaned up. Uh, at the moment, we support three, three types of profiles, SECOM, SE Linux, and AppArmor. Uh, also, it's possible to compose profiles, basically. You can define a base profile and then you can reference that profile inside, the, inside of a, another profile uh, custom resource. Or you can also use uh, an OCI image instead of just directly reference a, content, uh, a custom resource. We will have an example and see how we create an OCI image, how we publish and sign it. Another feature is profile binding. So instead of uh, creating the security context on each container, uh, the, the, the profile operator is able to add this on the fly. So we can say, I want to associate a security, uh, a security profile with a, with a container image and then the, the operator which will watch the deployment and the pods and it automatically add the security context to these pods. And also we have some metrics which are exposed and um, can be used for visibility. So now let's have a look at the architecture. Here looks a bit complicated, but essentially the operator has three main components. So there is this manager. You see it in the bottom uh, left corner. Uh, as, uh, uh, we, when we install the operator, we just install the manager. And manager is driven by a, by a, co a custom resource configuration where we can define uh, the, the confi different configuration settings and is able to create on the fly a webhook. Uh, this webhook can also be statically de deployed when we deploy the operator. And essentially the webhook is, uh, is used just to mutate configuration when we want to record the profile or we want to, to use profile bindings in other scenarios when we install is not required. And most importantly, the operator manages each daemon which runs on, the, on each node of the cluster via a daemon set. And as we see here in this, uh, in this uh, yellow box, 
the daemon runs on the node and actually does the whole heavy lifting. It does the profile installation in the underlying node file system and uh, also the profile re recording using different uh, profile uh, operator recorders. Also, we have a number of custom resources. We'll briefly have a more detailed look at them. So we have uh, three types of uh, profiles defined by custom resources. We have this profile recording custom resource, uh, which is used to, to define uh, and also profile binding. So now let's have a look at, a, at an example. So we have here a, a SECOM profile custom resource. Uh, if you are already familiar with SECOM, you see that is the profile itself, it's inlined into the specification of this uh, custom resource. For instance, in this case, we have a, a default action which is executed every time none of the above, the below actions take place. And then we see that we have um, a number of system calls which are allowed and a number of system calls which are denied. So basically that's a, that's the content of a second profile. Similarly for uh, up armor, we see that the up armor policy is directly in line the same inside of the custom resource. Uh, yeah, it's transparent. And as well for, for SC Linux profile, we have an example here. Uh, yeah, how it looks like. So now let, let's have a demo. Uh, in this demo, we will uh, install a second profile into a cluster. So let's start. So basically, we already have a installed SECOM, uh, sorry, a security profile operator in this cluster. We can have a look at it. You can see that uh, now we, we retrieve uh, basically the resources installed for, the, for this uh, profile operator. We see that we have the operator, the webhook, and four daemon sets which they run on each node. So this, this uh, uh, cluster has four nodes, so now we want to create a policy which denies all system calls, which looks like this. So now we create this policy. Uh, as soon as we have created the custom resource, then the operator, it will uh, install it in all underlying nodes of the cluster. Now we can check the, the state of this. We can see that was installed. This is the content of the policy after the installation. And also we have a resource to, to check the state of each node. So what's the state of, the, of this uh, custom resource on, the, on each node? We see that was already installed on each node. So now we want to test this. So let's create a, like a test pod which is referencing this uh, second policy. So basically now, because we deny all system call, as soon as we create this pod, it should fail in this situation because we didn't allow any, any system call. So we see that uh, the pod, it fails. So now let's, let's remove this and let the operator to do the cleanup. So we want to remove the second profile from the clusters of the operator, it will completely clean up the, the profile from the underlying nodes and also from custom resource. So now if we check, we see that profile was removed and we don't have any anything on the cluster. So this, everything takes automatically in case that, let's say our cast, cluster auto scales, new nodes are created then uh, the operator automatically will create a daemon. So like the daemon set will create a daemon on this new node and the daemon will install the, the profile basically on that node. Okay, now let's have a look at profile recording custom resource. As I said before, we see that uh, 
Here we, in the specification, we can define the, uh, what kind of profile we want to record. So in this example, we want to record the second profile, what type of recorder we want to use. We use BPF. At the moment, we support uh, SECOMP and ST Linux, and for SECOMP, we support both BPF and log parsing, but for F uh, ST Linux, it's just log parsing supported. Hopefully, in the future, we will have also up armor here. Also, when we define a profile recording, we need to define an object selector. We see here we want to, to select a pod which has this up alpine sorry, uh, label. And let's say on this pod we have multiple containers, but we just want to record this second profile for Nginx container. So we can define which containers, for which contents we want to record the uh, second profile. So now let's have a demo how we record the profile inside of the cluster and, and see uh, basically. So in this demo, we, we, we will record a, a profile for Nginx and we, then we will use it and see that it works. So first, when we want to record something, we create a dedicated namespace and this namespace needs to be labeled accordingly for recording. Uh, that's just, we will see later to, to reduce the amount of, uh, of work which needs to be done by the operator. So we create this namespace. Inside of this namespace now, let's say we want to record this uh, container. So first we need to create this uh, profile recording CRD which looks very similar with our example. We just uh, yeah, have a, we want to record it for Nginx container. We just have an a, a, a object selector for app, my app. Uh, so now the profile uh, recording CID gets created. And now we want to, to record something. So in order to record, to start recording a profile, we just need to create a pod which has the label up, my label, and contains an Nginx container. As soon as we create this pod, the security profile operator will start recording. So basically, it will start record all the system calls during the startup, and then we'll keep recording any system call executed after the startup. So now, let's say we leave this container for a while, it runs, we are happy, we want to now to, to save this, uh, this profile. We just need to delete our pod and then the operator will basically collect all these uh, system calls and uh, save the profile into a custom resource. So we can have a look uh, now after the pod was deleted. So we see that the, the profile was already installed. We see the path. Uh, on the local node where it was installed. Uh, now let's have a, a pod running, but this time it's the same pod but, uh, which we use for, for uh, recording, but this time let's use our recorded profile in our security context of this pod. So basically we just reference now the local uh, profile. So. Now, when we start this pod, it should work because we just recorded it, so we should expect that the, the pod starts. So we, we create a pod and we will check that uh, it starts, so we see that uh, the pod was success successfully started, basically. Okay, so that that was about uh, profile recording. So that's everything is automated. You see, in, for this use case to, to just create one profile for Nginx, it took us like less than two minutes. I believe most of the workloads are not much more complex uh, than Ng Nginx. So basically it's very easy. As you see, everything is automated. 
So now let's, I, I mentioned that we can compose profile. We have this profile st stacking feature where here we have an, an example with two, two profiles. So the profile on the left uh, is referencing another profile. In this case, it's called RunC. And this profile is already installed into the cluster. So additionally, let's say we have a base profile we want to use where we say these are our minimum system calls allowed, and then we can additionally add new system calls. So on the other example, we have a, a base profile which was defined in a OCI image. We will see in a minute a demo. So this image was created, signed, published, and then we can use it as a reference, as a base profile. The operator will, uh, will fetch this image and uh, create a profile. So now let, let's have a demo where we show how we can record a, a profile, package it into an OCI image, sign it, and then publish it uh, into a container registry which supports OCI specifications. Uh, so basically, in this case, we want to create a simple uh, second profile, let's say for echo command. It's just simply we run a CLI, you see, where we, we just say record and then we specify which process we want to record for and the profile is going to be recorded using eBPF. eBPF. It's saved into a YAML file and then we can take this YAML file and package it into OCI image. So this is the content which was created. We see all the system calls uh, of, 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 of this uh, command execution. Now we have a, a command which can take this YAML, so we just specify the path to the YAML. It takes the YAML, it creates an OCI image. It signs this image using a cosine it publishes the signature into the sign store that is widely available for everyone to, to verify. So, and then later on, basically everyone can verify, including the operator itself in another cluster when it uses this image. So now let's create a, a profile which basically it just referenced this, this uh, OCI image where the profile was defined. So as soon as we create this profile, the operator will, will fetch the OCI image from the registry. It will unpack it. First, sorry, it will verify the signature, check that everything is it's, uh, it's right, and then it will unpack it and install it into the cluster. So in this way, we can make like pretty good security uh, assumption about the source of this image. So it's, it's, it's a good measure for supply chain security. Uh, we make sure that these profiles were published by us and not by someone else, which tries to inject some, uh, some uh, malicious, let's say, system calls in our, uh, in our cluster. Okay, so that's about the demo. Uh, yeah, let's have a brief look how profile binding looks like. As I said before, it's relatively simple. We just define a profile reference in the profile binding and, uh, and an image which we want to associate, a container image for which we want to associate this, uh, this profile. And uh, the operator, it will uh, automatically modify the configuration of, of any pod deployed which doesn't have a security context. It will add the security context referencing this second profile. Okay, now let's conclude with some challenges we faced when we first adopt security profile operator. So, our first main challenge was that we have clusters, they run a containerized Linux distribution, maybe you heard about Flatcar Linux. Uh, 
here everything is containerized and also the file system is immutable. So basically you cannot modify anything. The operator initially was developed uh, for, I think, Fedora, Ubuntu, like standard Linux distributions where you can modify file systems and so on. So we had to, to implement some, uh, some fixes in this or some re redesign. So basically, when the operator starts, we do some uh, setup into an init container to set up the file system uh, for the operator. And only this init container uh, needs root privileges. As soon as the init container finishes setup job, then we start the effective daemon container, which does the installation, but this daemon container doesn't require any root privileges. In this way, we can uh, install files. Uh, we can install files in the underlying node. Another uh, important requirement we had was that, uh, as I said, we have a webhook, and we want this webhook to be highly available because, as you may know, if let's say we have a webhook which uh, is set up to 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 watch for pods. Let's say if this webhook goes down, then the entire cluster is completely down because you cannot create pods and anything. So basically, this is a very important requirement so to not affect the cluster functionality. And we had to implement some specific selectors that the webhook is not affecting uh, cluster operation and also that runs highly available with enough memory and CPU resources. Another challenge we have, we have uh, clusters that have mixed runtimes, so they have different runtimes. Uh, and of course, each runtime is more or less similar, but they have slightly differences. And the operator had some issues initially to, for instance, to work with in a such a, in a, such a cluster was kind of designed. Either you have a cluster running, let's say, only cryo or container D from the start or Docker and not a cluster which runs a mixture of these runtimes. So we, we have clusters which runs a mixture of runtimes, so we need to cope with kind of the situation that is able to install profiles on each node running these, uh, these runtimes. Also, another big issue we had um, was um, memory usage. So first time when we created, you know, let's say medium large cluster with hundreds of of nodes, we had thousands of pods. When we start the operator, it runs immediately out of memory. It took us a while to investigate why. <laughs> and uh, it turns out that uh, basically when we start watching for pods in a, in a cluster, even though, let's say, you use a, a selector for, for watching only specific pods, the uh, Kubernetes controller, it loads these pods in memory, uh, in, uh, in the cache, basically, of the controller. So we had to modify the cache of the operator in order to load only pods which they have a selector. So we had to set up a custom cache. This is a pretty standard memory optimization for, for controllers in order to avoid memory is issues in large clusters. Uh, yeah, we have, as I said, also multi tenant clusters, so we have multiple tenants running in the same cluster. In this case, of course, we have much stricter security requirements. We cannot uh, risk that one tenant can affect the other tenants because our initial um, intention was to allow tenants to record profiles for their workloads. So imagine we have a scenario where one tenant introduces a malicious syscalls into another tenant uh, profile or introduces a malicious syscall in its own, uh, in its own uh, uh, profile in order to escape, let's say, the container and end up on the nodes. So uh, in this case, we had to, to define a, a sort of an allow list in the operator configuration, which is predefined by the, the 
cluster operators. And this allow list actually prevents that someone installs system calls which are not defined into the, into the list. So let's say we have dangerous system calls which we want to completely exclude. So this will basically get that nobody outside of an administrator uh, will allow to install these system calls. Yeah, another challenge we faced when we started to record profiles for larger pods, let's say. So we had uh, a number of pods. They had uh, multiple init containers, multiple sidecar containers, and essentially one big application container running a Java, for instance, uh, service. So in that scenario, we were just interested to, to install, to, to take out a profile for this uh, Java application. Uh, so we had to extend the operator to allow us to just select one container out of that big pod. Uh, and also we face um, issues where we had uh, pods, uh, like not pods, but containers running a sequence of processes. So ideally we just have one process in a container which starts when the container is, is started, but in a real life, we have uh, bootstrap scripts, they run processes, they run like a, they do some setup and then they kick in another process. So the original design of the ABPF instrumentation was done to, to record the Cisco's per process ID. But as you can imagine in this scenario, we have multiple processes, process IDs during the life cycle of a container. So what it happened, we end up losing system calls from the profile and then we could not use that profile. So we had to redesign the ABPF instrumentation to, to record profiles, not per process ID, but per namespace ID because namespace ID is unique per container. So in this way, we made sure that um, basically we have all system calls in our, in our profile. So yeah, that's it. So if you have any question, happy to answer. Uh, yeah, please take the microphone and. Okay, so for all the challenges that you faced, I hope, assume that you guys upstreamed that again to the, to the operator? Yes, yes. So all fixes we send in upstream project and they run, all are merged and released. Okay. Then I have a, I have a very simple practical question. So and that kind of relates to some of the challenges you said you're facing. When exactly do you know your profiling is done? Sometimes you have applications which do well, strange things only once in a while. So when exactly do you know when you're done? And it's like... Yeah, that's and a good question. Like so 15, 20 years ago, when I had to build like SC Linux profiles, this is already exactly the exactly. The so we, we had exactly then. this problem. So basically, we had a large Java application, and originally I thought, okay, if we record the startup sequence, it's enough. But of course, it's not. <laughs> so basically, you need to leave that process running either expecting that, let's say you have a running service and you say, I, I record for a week, for instance, and then uh, you create a profile. Or you, you run a low test against that service, you try to exercise as much coverage as you can, and you hope that the profile, it will be uh, completed. Um, yeah, of course, I don't encourage you to take, a, I mean, do a recording and put directly in production that profile, just go through a normal release pipeline. So first try it in dev, run some tests, check that everything is fine, no sys syscall is denied. If you see something, then you can keep recording and updating that profile and then release it into a production. Yeah, and, and one more question related to the um, well, best practices too. So you're using SecComp and SE Linux profiles or? So we, we, we started with uh, SecComp first and we want to add, of course, AC Linux. So definitely, I encourage to use both, either AC Linux or AppArmor with SECOM because uh, SECOM is just uh, 
basically limiting the number of system calls, but AC Linux or Pop Armor has more fine grain, for instance, networking related stuff or other operations which can be performed inside of the operating system. Yeah, and then the, um, the recorder for the AC Linux profile is basically using the audit lock and then the audit to allow functionality. Yes, exactly. Okay. So okay. it just it starts that, but it's everything automated. It starts uh, audit logging with AC Linux and then it collects all the stuff and then creates. And the same can be done for App Armor. So there is a tool which can create a base profile and then, so that's the intention, in, like, I think, by, by the community to create that. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, extending that question of how do you know when you've profiled enough, have you considered automated ways of like letting it run for a week um, in soft fail and then uh, switching it over later? So that's basically what we tried, yes. We, we uh, set up, a, let's say, a stage cluster and we let it run, but also run load tests against it. So that's what we tried. Specifically though, the automated step up, was that something that you did or did you always have manual review? Uh, we actually did not. I mean, it's automated in the sense that we run the operator to do the recording, so we don't really watch into the logs and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, we, we try to exercise as much functionality as we can, basically. So no other questions? <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining and hopefully.